with knitting. I've gotten to a place where I often stress with my knitting, I feel a lot of pressure with my knitting and as I said I have gotten wrapped very much up in the knitting with patterns and it's not as free spirited for me as it once was whereas with crocheting it definitely has kept that very free spirited I've not gotten wrapped up in um, expectations or patterns I still feel the same way as when I did when I was a child crocheting Hi! Welcome welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Hi, my name is Olina and I'm knitting from Norway and welcome to my knitting podcast. Here I talk about all things knitting, my current projects, my finished projects, my planned projects, yarn, just anything that comes to mind while I sit here and chat with you guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I am filming this podcast a day earlier than I usually do. I usually film on Fridays just so I can really update real time basically on what I'm working on. But this Friday, tomorrow, it is Norway's Constitutional Day, the 17th of May, and there's a big celebration and <laughs> the whole day is full of booked. We're doing things all day and I didn't want to take away from that celebration to do a podcast, so I'm doing it one day earlier. So it's not a full week of knitting and an update on a full week but I hope that's okay with you guys and I didn't want to leave you hanging without a podcast so I am doing it a day earlier but before we get into all of that I thought I'd talk a little bit about what I'm wearing and today I'm wearing my Yuko top by Knitting for Olive. This is one of the quite few summer tops I have. I don't have that many because we don't have a lot of summer but these last few days we actually have had really nice weather and this year like all of the leaves on the trees are already green or turning green and that is super early for us here. We usually like never have green leaves by the 17th of May so now everything is green and that is a really big deal everyone's just going around and I think the topic most people talk about now is oh my god have you seen how green the trees are so this is like a big deal but it's been a lot warmer and more summer weather um, than I anticipated this early so I'm actually getting use of my summer tops but as I said this is my yuk top I'll show it I have some focaccia dough here because I'm making focaccia for tomorrow but this is my yuk top by Knitting for Olive uh, and it actually is a wrap top um, which I think is really really cool and it makes it a lot easier for it to really fit um, more different body types because you can like adjust a lot more and it makes it also easier because bodies can also fluctuate but this can fit like a more um, this can fit through more varied sizes um, even though it's knit in one size it's easier to customize it and I actually made this in knitting for, knitting for Olive's own silk they're pure silk um, so this is 100% silk top so out of all of my um, summer tops and camisoles. This is definitely the one that is like only a summer top. I never use this in winter at all because it is not that warm and as you can see it's also very low, cu low cut which means I don't get a lot of use out of it because I only use it in summer and ever since I made this I think I made this um, I think I might have made this when I was pregnant with my son because I really wanted to try out the um, pure silk and I really like the look of this um, pattern which I still do but ever since I finished it I've had a really hard time finding times and places to use it since it is so very low cut and I don't know how comfortable I am with how low cut it is I feel like it's almost like spilling out um, so I wear like stuff uh, above it but then I don't really see the point because I also want to show it off because I am really proud of the piece and it is um, a really pretty piece and it has these really cool details here um, along the shape which I think is a super cool detail. This is also made 
the way this top is made is really cool because you don't like knit it um, top down or bottom up. You knit it from like the side here and then you do the increases and then you actually Kitchener stitch it together in the back. Um, so each of these pieces are made like separately, which I thought was a really fun construction and I had a lot of fun making this and it is so pretty. It's also in my favorite color from, from Knitting for Olive, their, um, what's it called? Dusty Dove Blue or something. I think it's dusty and it's definitely Dove Blue and that is my favorite color they have out of all of their colors, both in the merino and the kid silk and the pure silk. I love the dusty dove blue and I so desperately want to love this top and cherish it and use it. But even though I like love all the aspects of it, I just don't know if it fits into my wardrobe and I really struggle with getting it used enough. And I also have just struggled with a lot of fit issues with this one because this is a bit low but I think that's just an issue I have with how it fits me. But I also made the straps too long so instead of going back and ripping out I just did not want to do that with the top. I don't use that much. Um, I've just uh, tied it which is a very like halfway solution but it works and today when I put it on I really like the look of it but I just don't know how comfortable I'd be using it out and about and moving around um, but as I said I do so desperately want to love it so it's still in my knitted closet. I have not repurposed the yarn because it is also a top I am really proud of having made. So I'm just struggling a bit with it because I would want the yarn to be used for something I use a lot. Um, but I would want that to be this as well. I just don't know how to make this something I use more. I do think that um, the ribbing is a bit tight so maybe I could block it. I made this quite a long time ago and I wasn't that into blocking um, before like quite recently like around the time when I started doing YouTube and this was made way before then so I think maybe if I blocked this that might help but I don't know um, but I worry today to like try to get more use out of it and try to figure out how I feel about it because I feel like I should figure that out soon and try to find solutions and if I don't find any solutions to make me wear this more I think I have to make like some sort of decision or if I should keep it just for the memories and because I'm proud of having made it, if I should repurpose the yarn, if I should sell it. Um, but. <laughs> That's just me rambling on about all of my thoughts about this piece. Um, but it is a really pretty piece. It is a good pattern. I do love the look on, of it. Just don't maybe love it as a piece for me. Um, but I would recommend it. It is also super fun to work up all of the techniques, the different ways, the different way of knitting up a camisole, that it is a wrap top. All of these details here are super fun to knit. So I do recommend it as a project if you think you would get more out of use out of it than I've done. Um, but yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. And I think we can move into whips. And this week I thought we could do newest to all this just to change it up a bit and not always start <laughs> this thing off with the same project. I think that gets old um, but this week I have a lot of whips and I have a lot of whips with deadlines and not just self-imposed deadlines but like actual deadlines and deadlines that are getting quite close now so I'm starting to feel the stress and that I just need more knitting time and more hours than there is in a day because I just can't get to everything on time and 
yeah, I am just starting to be a bit stressed about all of this pro project, so I am trying to knit more focused and be a bit better at actually getting things done, but I'm not being great at it. Um, but the first project, the newest project, is a project I actually cast on. I think this is my second day of working on it, and that is the Always Camisole by Garn Oshlade. She's a Norwegian designer, and this is the first time I'm knitting anything from her, but I do love all of her patterns, so it definitely won't be the last. Um, but as I said, I'm doing the Always Camisole, and this is going to be a confirmation gift from my cousin, because she's getting confirmed the first weekend in June. And I've struggled a lot with figuring out what to gift her for her confirmation. It's quite a big thing in Norway. Um, but as a cousin, what do you gift? Um, and I thought I would want to do knitting, but then I had to figure out something that I thought she would want. And it's just been difficult. And at this time, we're getting so close that I also had to like figure out what can I make that also won't take that long. Um, and I looked around, I also talked to my sister, which is uh, who is about the same age and they, ha they hang out a lot. So I tried to get some av advice from her and she said that the always camisole would be okay and it would be okay in this yarn. I'm using Dropscot Merino in the navy color. Um, this is my first time using Dropscot Merino for knitting. And this is the top so far, so luckily even though I am casting on and everything is a bit of a mess and I started this way later than I should have, luckily this pattern knits up really quickly, so I don't know how easy it is to see in this dark yarn, but you start up here with the shoulders and knit the front panel and the back panel, which I have done, and I've actually connected in the round and knit quite a bit as well. So this is progressing nicely. I have actually stopped also to do all of the edges uh, with I-cord. So all of that is done. So now I only have to finish the body and then do the I-cord on the body and weave in ends and wash it and then it will be done. So that will hopefully happen today, tonight, early tomorrow because I need this to be done just for peace of mind and to know that at least one of my projects that I have a deadline on is done. And one of the reasons this moves so quickly is that it is worked on 5mm needles. The pattern asks for 5.5mm needles, but I started out doing that and first of all I did not like the fabric that made with um, Dropscot Marina. I think the pattern calls for knitting for olive, pure silk and knitting for olive merino. And I don't know if uh, using two different strands makes it easier to go up in needle size, but it didn't work out well with cut merino at least. And I also figured out that I I had interchangeable needles, and one of the needles was six millimeter needle, and one was five and a half. And I couldn't find the other five and a half, so I just scrapped that whole idea and went with five millimeters instead because I could actually find both of my five millimeter. Um, interchangeable needles and uh, Dropscot Merino just looks a lot better with 5mm needles um, and I am really happy with the fabric that has made. Of course if you pull on it it gets quite gapy but I think this is going to be very good for a summer top and I don't know if it's the gauge or if it's just the yarn but this is turning out so soft. As I said, it is my first time knitting with Dropscot Merino and so far I am really impressed and it's definitely a yarn I'm going to use for more summer projects. I have a few summer projects planned out with Dropscot Merino. I talked a bit about my summer plans earlier this week if you want to watch a video all about that. But I do have more plans for Dropscot Merino and after having started knitting on this i am looking more forward to those projects than i was before because this is such a fun yarn to work with it's 
turning out so soft and the stitch definition is great um, it's just a great yarn to work with so that's definitely going to become a go-to yarn for me whereas when I was working with this pure silk which is only silk I did not love that it was too rough on my hands didn't like it so I, w I decided to never knit with that again because it just wasn't for me but this definitely is and I'll knit a lot more using this. I also love that it is a mix of cotton and merino. I think that will work very well for our climate. I also tried this on yesterday right before joining in the round because I wanted to see since I since I went from 5.5mm needles to 5mm needles, I wanted to see if that would actually work out. I also decided to, um, in the start I thought I would do a small um, for this pattern because it is supposed to have a bit of negative ease. But since I went down a needle size, I decided to go up a size in the pattern. So I wanted to try it on yesterday. I am pretty close to the same size as my cousin so I wanted to try it on just to see how that would work out since I made a few changes to the gauge and also as the size and everything so tried it on just a bit and it looks really good I really like the shoulders this has it doesn't really have a long shoulder strap it just has a really tiny shoulder strap so the neck is really high up kind of a boat neck I think um, and quite deep armholes and I loved the fit of this I was not sure how I felt about the fit when I started working on it it is by a bit different than the camisoles and tops I usually go for but when trying it on I realized that I I'm sorry the dog is dressed and walking around and it isn't really coming down mm. um, but when trying it on i realized that i really like the fit of this actually so after the filming this podcast i'm going to go through my stash of drops cotton merino and see if i have some yarn for this so i can make one for myself as well because i really i really fell in love with the fit of it and as i said i think it's going to be great for summer it's in a great yarn it's also such a quick knit so it can just be like a side project knit on a whim and I am in the mood and uh, looking for more um, summer knits to add to my wardrobe but as I said I have a lot of projects with deadlines so all of those needs to be finished first before I can move on to um, knitting more for myself but this is the always camisole that I'm going to gift to my cousin and hopefully it will be finished today. I think it needed to be like 50 centimeters or something from the shoulder and I have about 30 maybe now. Um, so I think it should be doable um, by tonight or tomorrow, all depending on how much knitting time I get after this, of course, but it would be really nice to get one of these projects of my needles and feel a bit better in terms of all of my deadlines, but that's the first project. Um, and then the next project after that, that's the newest, is another project with the deadline, and this is also for Cousin, actually. And this is the christening outfit I'm making for uh, my twin cousins. So I have one cousin who's going to be confirmed. And then the weekend after that, my twin cousins are going to be christened. And I'm making their outfit. And I have made the first twin their outfit. That's fully done with both the mobile slipover and the Carl's cardigan. But for the second twin, I am only this far on the Carl's cardigan. I think last week I only had barely started on the ribbing and now I am here. I have done the ribbing and a bit over halfway of the smock uh, patterning and then I ran out 
of my first skein and I just haven't gotten around to um, split splicing on the second skein and getting moving again but this is definitely the project that's going to uh, have all of my focus once I'm done with the always camisole but I'm not going to change in between them now because the always camisole is so close to being finished so that's just going to get all my focus and then this is going to get all my focus um, this is made um, using drops uh, Daisy in the beige color. I don't know what this beige is called exactly. I think it might be marzipan or something. And it is the absolute perfect color to go with this smock um, patterning. It suits the smock pattern, pattern so good and the Carl's cardigan looks so good using this color. So it is a fun project to work on but I must say that knitting for twins is um, difficult. It's more difficult than just doing baby knits or just gift knitting because not only do you have to do the knitting, you have to do the same thing twice. Uh, luckily the slipovers are going to be two different colors so I think that will help but the jackets are the exact same color, the same everything. So. I have run into a bit of a roadblock there, just I am struggling to motivate myself to work on it. Um, but it is turning out good and I need this to get done soon because I am going to deliver them via my father I think the last weekend in May and that is closing up, like really closing up and I still have I would say maybe half of this left uh, because the smock patterning on the body is what takes the longest and that's I am more than halfway done on that and then just the sleeves and the, those go really fast and then the yoke which also goes quite fast and then the button bands maybe a third of the way done I'd say I am on this um, but connecting the next yarn is the biggest roadblock once I do that I think I'll be able to make quite quick uh, progress because all of this was made uh, all of this progress was made last weekend we had a weekend in Oslo I went to a yarn festival there that was loads of fun I had um, the best time seeing other knittings meeting other knittings I met some of you even it was a really good time and I got to see loads of yarn touch loads of yarn um, knitting supplies that was great and we also visited my twin cousins so I brought this project to work on and just on the car ride there and in the evenings there I got all of this done in between everything else that was happening so this does progress quite quickly if I just actually knit on it um, but that is my big issue that I don't I haven't been grabbing for this but I am, this is going to be my priority once the always camisole is done and if I get to finish both of those this week I'm allowed to knit a bit on what, some of my selfish knits um, because I do want to do a bit of both. I don't only want to spend all of my time gift knitting but I do have to spend a fair chunk of it gift knitting now just to reach all of the deadlines. But if I finish these two this week, I can have the rest of the week to knit on whatever I want and then do the mobile slipover the week after. And then I will still have everything finished in time, I think. So that is kind of the plan I have for myself. Luckily, both of these projects I'm working on this week are going by quite quickly. I am a bit more worried about the mobile slipover on 3mm needles and lots of structure. But... I can't be concerned with that right now because I am too stressed about everything else. Um, but um, yeah, that is the Carl's cardigan so far. If I didn't say, I am knitting it in the size 9 to 12 months because I want it to fit after summer is done. It's going to be quite oversized for the christening, but I think that's okay for one day. And I don't think it's going to be used a lot for the rest of summer I don't see that as being very likely since this is quite a warm 
jacket and if I'm going to spend all of this time knitting something up and knitting it twice I really wanted to do it in a size that would fit them once winter and fall and winter uh, rolls along just so that I actually be able to use it um, because if I'm going to spend time knitting it I want them to be able to spend time using it but that is it for the Carl's Cardigan and for the gift segment of this week's what I've been knitting on. The next project, if we go from newest to oldest, is the baby blanket I'm knitting, the Garnotopia baby blanket by Industrik. And I have to say I have not knit a single stitch on this guy. There's just not been time. I didn't want to drag this big boy with me to Oslo either. And ever since we come, have gotten home, I don't know where the time has gone, but I, there's just been no time. I haven't looked at it since last time. It's literally been laying here where I put it down the last time I was filming and nothing has happened. But as I've been saying, this is just a side project. It will take however long it takes. Um, so I'm not stressing about this at all. Um, and I just love having a project that's totally stress-free on the side here waiting for me. So that's where I'll keep it. But yeah, just honorable mention to this guy. I am knitting it with drops air in this color, 9mm, everything, um, all of that. But not that interesting to talk about when I haven't knit anything on it. Um, and then the next uh, project is my pole cardigan and this is a project I have worked a little bit on this week. Not um, or quite a lot but you can't see that it's a lot because what I've been doing is that I've been doing the rib on the body and the body is now done but the pattern said to just leave the stitches on the needle and leave the yarn uh, to not break the yarn or anything uh, don't know why but it said to move on and just leave everything as it is and I haven't had the time to read the pattern and see what the next step is so I don't know but this is the body being done last time I podcasted I had just barely started on the ribbing you could barely see it and now the ribbing is done and this took so long it's on three millimeter needles and quite a few stitches so I think this is 13 centimeters with the ribbing and it took all week not that I've been working on only this but I have worked a fair bit on this but I brought it with me to Oslo and worked a bit on it and also when we got home and it has just taken so long and just one row across takes for forever but it is finally done and I do like the look of this I I don't know but if you ask me I think the ribbing looks a bit lighter than this I don't know if it's because maybe the kid silk and the baby merino act a bit different once you get it in ribbing but I think it is a bit lighter than the rest of the body um I'm just going to try it on over um, but this is it I am pretty happy with the length it has now it will probably be a bit shorter once it's blocked but I think this is going to be a great um, spring card again I still have hopes to be able to finish it before it's actually summer and while it's still spring um, but yeah I need <laughs> to finish some other things I really want to have the time to actually read the pattern and look at what the next thing is. I think I might be supposed to start doing um, the edges now. I think that's the next thing before doing sleeves or maybe sleeves the next thing. I don't know but for now this is just where this project is. Um, I am really happy to have finished the ribbing, I think that was the goal I set myself um, last podcast and at least I have reached that even if I haven't reached any of my other goals um, I set myself and I am using Drops Baby Merino and Drops Kid Silk in these bright green colours and I am absolutely loving them together 
this bright green cardigan is going to be so great. Um, can't wait to use this hopefully in spring and definitely in summer and late summer evenings. I think that's going to be so great. If I can't finish it by the end of May, my dream is to at least be able to finish it by my birthday. My birthday is the 7th of June. So right in between the confirmation and the christening, but this would be a great birthday gift to myself to be able to finish this and be able to use it on my birthday. I would love for that to happen, so either by the end of May or by my birthday I want this to be finished. Um, but yeah, that's the ball cardigan. Lots of work, but not really a lot to show for it. Um, yeah, I feel like I am closer than ever to actually getting this done and I can't wait to actually cast off the body because it will be easier to try on but I think I need to do the edges to cast off the body um, but that's my baby the cross card again and then the last active project that I have is the wedding dress and as I said I'm not going to do big updates on that anymore the mohair skirt is the same that as the uh, baby blanket. I haven't touched it. I have not knit with chunky needles at all this week. Um, that's been great for my hands and I really need my hands in top shape to be able to finish all of the knits I need to finish in the next few weeks. Um, I did knit a bit on the wedding dress um, this week while I was in Oslo and everything. It was just great to have a really mindless um, in the round project because I think this uh, now that always comes all is always also mindless in the round but before that I don't think I had any in the round projects at all um, so working on this was just great it is getting quite big but it's definitely still manageable to have with me on the go and knitting in the round on four millimeter needles is meditation to me so that's been really good with this one um, so I have knit a bit on it and you can start this to see the shirt, uh, skirt take shape but there's not a lot more to say I just wanted to show it off that you can see the skirt and I think it's looking so good I am obsessed but those are all of my active projects. I think I have one, two, three, four, five active projects, which is a lot. Um, but even though I usually get quite stressed with having active projects, all of my active projects is not what's making me stressed right now. It's the fact that none of them are being finished, but I am starting to get more comfortable having multiple projects on my needles. And I think that is because I've learned to have some projects on my needles without the deadline, like the baby blanket or the wedding dress where I'm taking my time, and that definitely helps. And now I just need to actually work on the pieces that have a deadline and that needs to be finished. But that is it for whips. And I did actually manage to finish something this week, even though it was none of the projects I said I wanted to finish. I actually picked up crochet again this um, week or if I started a bit last week maybe because um, we are a lot outside since it's summer and I realized that my son, need, son needed a sun hat or a bucket hat of some sort to shade when we are outside and to protect his head from the sun and I thought that a bucket hat, a crochet bucket hat would be really cool and I have been thinking a lot lately that I want to get back into crochet because I really loved to crochet a couple of years ago and then I just, when I picked knitting back up when I was pregnant with my son I never picked crochet back up and I've just really been wanting to pick that up again so since I wanted to uh, make him bucket hat I decided to try to crochet it and my sister, who crochets quite a lot, was visiting us that day, so she helped me a bit. And this is the result. Um, I started by making these granny squares here with the blue and the white. 
This is also drop scott merino and I really recommend it for crocheting as well. It was great. Um, but I made all of these. I think there are 10 uh, granny squares and I used a uh, 4 millimeter. I think it's called millimeter with hooks as well. I think so. I used a 4 millimeter hook um, to make all of these granny squares and then my sister crocheted them together for me. Um, here and then after that, that whole border with granny squares, there were so ridiculously many ends to weave in and as you might know if you've watched me before, I hate weaving in ends and I think there were like five ends per square so I just capitulated totally and visited my grandma and gave her <laughs> that to, for her to weave in the ends, which she did for me. And then I got it back and I started crocheting and the rest of the hat is just made using uh, um, the most basic stitch and I cannot remember what it's called in Norwegian or English but if you are a crocheter you uh, or something the most <laughs> basic stitch there is the rest of the hat is made doing that and I picked up stitches along here um, and then I did and um, one, two, three, four, five, I think, rows of the blue. The blue is two rows and the white is one row. I don't know if you can see, but I did five of the blue rows just regularly without any decreases um, until I've done all of those. And then I started doing decreases um, up here with the white one and I did a decrease one row and then one row without decreases and then <laughs> decreases again and I did the decreases just by not crocheting in one of the uh, like loops I don't know any of the like official terms for crocheting um, but I made it back night I did not have a pattern I did not want to buy a pattern I, when I was crocheting before I never used patterns I just did it by freehand same as with my knitting when I was younger and whereas I've been with knitting I've started knitting a lot from patterns and I am really enjoying that and I've learned a lot. I really wanted to keep the like free spirited way of crocheting that I had when I was younger instead of turning to patterns with that as well. I'm trying to do that with knitting too to branch out a bit from patterns and like with the wedding dress design things myself because I do really like that, so I wanted to keep that intact with crocheting. Um, and I also did a couple of rows down here. I did try it on a couple of times while I was making this. My son was actually asleep and I just tried it on while he was asleep to see if it would fit him, because I didn't really know what I was doing. So I made a little <laughs> bit down here as well to extend it. And then I made the brim. And for that I just crocheted two stitches in every like stitch or loop or what you would call it to make it flare out. Um, and in the end it fits him, the edge does flare out and most importantly my son has accepted it, he will wear it. I have not woven in any ends, I don't really know how to weave in ends on crochet so I just have not wanted to do that yet, but I, uh, we have used it quite a lot, even though uh, none of that is in order. We still have used it, my son has accepted it. Um, he's worn it for whole days without um, wanting to take it off, so I am very pleased with that. Also, I think it is super cute. I love um, white and blue together. I think white and blue complement each other so well and especially this like very vibrant like turquoise blue with the white is very much summer vibes to me i love um the granny squares i think those suits it well and it is just super cute and also it almost fits me like this is how it looks and it is almost my size i think i could get away with making the same one without having more granny squares i just would need a bit more length on it but i think i think it looks good um in my humble opinion i think this looks good and 
to be honest when I see uh, him wear it I do kind of want my own because it is great shade it is cute um, and while I was crocheting I actually just sat there to myself and realized this is so great because with knitting I've gotten to a place where I often stress with my knitting I feel a lot of pressure with my knitting and as I said, I have gotten wrapped very much up in the knitting with patterns and it's not as free-spirited for me as it once was. Whereas with crocheting, it definitely has kept that very free-spirited. I've not gotten wrapped up in um, expectations or patterns. I still feel the same way as when I did when I was a child crocheting. Probably because I've had such a long break and the last time I crocheted I was a child. So. It was very, very mind, um, like, it was so great, it was mindfulness. I just sat there and had the best time and realized I need to do more of this. Um, so this summer I really want to get back into crocheting. I feel like for me crocheting might be a summer thing uh, that I do with summer yarn and for summer accessories. Um, I think I am going to make myself one of these hats just because I think it's cute and then maybe I'll make some other summer accessories as well. I don't think I'll ever get into like crocheting wool winter sweaters but uh, maybe a tank top or just accessories I would love to do and yeah maybe learn some new techniques when it comes to crocheting as well because I really enjoyed getting back into it, so that is something I want to do more of. Uh, if you are a crocheter, I would love to hear some suggestions, not for patterns, because I do not want to uh, follow patterns, but maybe for things I could make, um, that would be really fun. But yeah, that is my one finished um item this week. It's not a knit item but um, I made it and it's a yarn crafting thing so I thought it fit into this podcast and I am quite proud of it and wanted to show it off so here it is. I used about a skein of each color to make this um, so crocheting definitely takes up a bit more yarn but it was really fun and I really recommend trying out new things and branching out and just having fun with your craft. It, I had a lot of fun with this but that is my one finished thing this week. And, and lastly I thought I could show some of what I got when I visited that yarn festival I talked about in Oslo. I went there thinking I had a few things I wanted to get and most importantly, my goal was to not get any yarn. Um, and of course, that's very hard at the yarn festival. Almost all of the stands were, was showing off really pretty yarn. Um, but I went around, I think I went around looking at everything five times before I bought anything because I wanted to know I was buying the things I actually wanted and not just the first thing I saw. But the first thing I ended up actually buying was um, some of what I had on my list as to what I definitely wanted to get and that was that I got this really big um, like band roll, I don't know what you would call it but um, this long, uh, I think it's 50 meters of this um, stitch holder so you could cut it up to, as to any length you would want it to be if you need to just put like five stitches on hold if you want to try on something big I think this is going to be great for when I want to try on the wedding dress and yeah I just go through a lot of these um, they are supposed to last forever but my son really likes to, likes to play with them as well so when I need them I can never find them so I thought this was a really great thing to get and it also was really cheap so I had to get this and it's also this like really nice sparkly like silvery thing so that's the first thing I got and I also got um, these like stitch markers but um, they're stitch markers you can let 
let me try to show you the stitch markers you can actually like um put on your stitches instead of just having it on your uh, needle so i think that's great just to for example if i'm doing buttonholes i can mark exactly where those are supposed to be so i think i got 20 of those and they come in this really cute wooden box um, which i'm really excited about so i got both of these at the same stand um, and that was the first thing i got and then the stand ne right next to it had another thing that was really important for me to try to get and that are these bags here and these two are lavendel because as you might see my stash is getting quite big now and i have heard horror stories about getting moths in your stash or other things and i know for example lavender um lavender is supposed to help with that so i got these pouches to put in with my knitting to keep all of my yarn safe um, and the same with this this is cedar tree i think it's called oh my god cedar tree it's these balls of um cedar tree i think that's what it's called in english um, and that's supposed to do the same thing just like without the smell so i don't know if this is also going in my stash or if i might put this with my finished nets um but me and my son have ours next to each other so i might do that there and then this like one there and one there these also smell really strongly <laughs> so everything's probably going to smell like lavender but these are something these were the most important thing for me to get while i was there because um, i really want to keep my yarn safe because there is a lot of value here and um, so investing in something to keep it safe is well worth it and then the next thing i got was something i didn't really plan on getting but i wasn't opposed to the idea either I was there just everything, knitting accessories was kind of allowed and the thing I got is this stitch stoppers to have on your needles and I thought these were so cute and useful now that I have a million projects at a time. So I got these like sunflower ones in pretty, it's hard to show, uh, they're pretty bright yellow which I thought would be cute for summer and they just I was obsessed with them immediately when I saw them so I wanted to get those I thought they could be good with my pole cardigan and just other summer projects and then I also got the same ones just in white because I thought those would be super cute on my wedding dress because they're white and a flower and yeah just immediately when I saw them I knew I wanted to have them on my wedding dress and as I've been saying, my wedding dress is going to be a long-term whip, so it's great to have stitch hold, uh, stitch stoppers on them because uh, it's a project that's going to just be lying around most of the time. And look how cute that is! Um, so I got those. I got two of each, of course, uh, because there are stitch stoppers. And then I also got this like leather um, things. I got four of those. I got this with um, a tractor because I thought um, my fiance works with tractors and my son is with him a lot of the time. So I thought on my son's like work sweater um, that I could have this on the hem of that just so it very clearly shows which of his sweaters and pants and of his knitting that is like work appropriate and that he can wear when working and also my son just loves everything with tractors on them so I thought this would be a good incentive to get him to wear his knitted clothes as well and also they're just cute i think it might have been more for me 
than for them that I did it, but I'm trying to play it off as something for them to justify myself getting them. Um, but those were all of the like accessories I got that I was allowed to get. And then uh, as I was going around, and I think I'd gone around all of the stands like 10 times at this point, and I just could not get this yarn out of my head. I got two skins actually. <sighs> These two, they're from Strickfeber. And I kept walking by and I saw this yarn and I could not get it out of my head and look at it. It's so beautiful. It's so vibrant. I just had to have it. Um, and there, the way I justified it to myself when I was there was that they're hand dyed, so they're one of a kind, limited edition. Um, and also I only got two hanks and that's basically zero. Um, I round up from five and down from five, so if it's less than five, it's basically zero. Um, also, the length on this is really long. Each skein is 1200 meters, so I could get like one project from each of these. Um, so I got a lot of yarn. But also at the same time I didn't get yarn. <laughs> That's kind of how I justified it to myself um, and I got it and I am very pleased that I got it. I am trying to be on a yarn ban or a no buy or a low buy, whatever you want to call it. I am not going to be super strict about it because I want to keep my joy with knitting and yarn and everything. And I feel like also a yarn festival is a special occasion. I'm not going to I'm not buy. going to buy yarn from like a big organization or at least I'm going to try not to do that. But buying yarn at a stand at a yarn festival feels very different and also supporting small businesses. So I that's how I am justifying getting this yarn and I love this yarn and now I get to have this yarn this summer and to have a great time figuring out what to knit with this. I do have a few ideas but I am not 100% sure but I love this yarn. It's probably going to get its place up here just to brighten up my day and it be the first thing I see every morning and yeah, I'm just super excited about it. That is everything I have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like in a comment. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe and remember to ring that bell button. So you'll be reminded every time I post. Bye.